The story begins with Detective Jonathan Shade investigating a murder. A murder that's connected to a known serial killer known as The Artist. And just walking in, you can smell the stench of the decaying bodies. It was so bad, multiple officers hurled by the foul stench. And there we see it. A body. A body suspended in the air like a sick and twisted ritual. Like they're sacrificing somebody's life and offering it to a higher power. Suddenly the body burst open and we see tons of butterflies bursting out of his stomach. Shade then comes to a profound realization. His actions are not motivated by the press or the attention that they bring. But a lingering question still emerges in his mind. Who is the artist and who is he calling to? We then transition into a house and there we see a man by the name of Kenneth Neely as he shares his backstory with him as he spent his days working on the dead making them look beautiful and he used to wonder as a boy why do you spend so much time making the dead look beautiful and his dad believed that all things must look beautiful in the kingdom of God with a sick and twisted grin on his face telling him but I don't do this for your God or my father what do they know about beauty? Neely only considers himself to be an instrument of God as he's been calling out to him. Ever since he saw the dragons in the sky, he knew they were gods and he saw the mark of his God upon his forehead. Suddenly Carnage bursts through the door, telling Kenneth that he's been a busy, busy boy. Kenneth then gets to his knees and begins to beg to Carnage, saying that he's been a fan of his work for so long and he would love it if he would be the next host now that Cletus Cassidy is finally dead. But Carnage assures him, Cletus was special, and without him, things have changed. He has changed. Without Cletus Cassidy, he is no longer interested in bonding with any measly human. And perhaps he should just turn his brains into mush right now. But Carnage has came a long way, and he at least wants to see what he has to offer. Carnage then begins to show him the extent of his power as he begins to absorb Hydro Man's body. As Hydro Man begins to scream, begging him to stop. Carnage admits it was fun while it lasted, but all that torture and killing was only a preoccupation towards his real goals. And he's going to find his real meaning of beauty. So why would he weigh himself down with another host? Meanwhile, Detective Shade, driven by his obsession with capturing Neely, witnesses the transformation of Carnage and Hydro Man. Detective Shade, risking his life, dives into the energy, demanding both of them to stop as they are under arrest. But Carnage isn't afraid. In fact, he's actually curious on what is going on. Carnage then tells him that they are both similar. They are both trying to see where their limits really lie. And as the detective begins to fall apart, Carnage gives him a piece of himself so he can survive. Detective Shade then wakes up in the hospital with Detective Booth by his side. Shade then shares fragment memories of the encounter with Neely. But Shade knows that there's something off with them. Shade knows that something has changed. Then realizes that he's been physically changed and experiencing intense bloodlust and gaining the memories of Cletus Cassidy. And he sees all the dark, all the twisted, all the sick things that Cletus ever did. The nurse then enters the room, trying to see if he's okay, but to her reveal, he is no longer in there. We then see him on the roof as he looks down at his hand and sees some of Carnage's tentacles all over some of his body as his brain feels like it's flowing with adrenaline. And he remembers the words of Carnage. Show me how far you're willing to go. And now that he's faster, stronger, and has the world's most notorious serial killer in his head, there's nothing that can stop him. And he's coming for every last one of them. We then transition to a Motel 6, where we see Neely has killed two more people. Neely then sat alone on the bed, disappointed, as Carnage's words echoed in his mind. But Carnage didn't intend to make him upset or jealous. Instead, Neely should be flattered. And he told the agent that so the agent can transform into something beautiful. But Neely was confused. Why did Carnage give him the power to destroy him? Carnage clarified that he didn't grant him the power to destroy him, but rather so he can transform. And he tells Neely to look at what he's doing. It's pathetic. How he spends all this time killing people and try to seek beauty in your victims. And are you not tired of it? Carnage then tells him, perhaps I expected way too much of you. And I've been unfair dragging you into my journey. But he assures him that he hasn't and that he wants to be worthy. And Carnage assures him that he's going on one more ride so he can witness his next kill. 
We then see Carnage and Neely sitting in the base of the spot. The spot then frantically attempts to flee, bewildered by the unexpected chaos that surrounds him. He questions why Carnage is even trying to kill him, and what purpose does it serve? But Carnage, determined to inflict harm, relentlessly pursues him, slashing at everything in sight, using his long bladed tentacles to target each spot that the spot teleports to. Carnage then tells him, I want access to the spotted dimension. And the spot, still frantically running, tells him, I could just help you access it, and we don't have to do this, as the spot questions the need to kill him over it. And in a fit of rage, Carnage screams, but where is the carnage in that? But yet, despite plunging his enormous tentacles into countless spots, the spot was able to evade every attack, emerging from one of the spots. And he tells Carnage confidently that he will never be able to defeat him because he will need to catch him. But suddenly, Neely intervenes, grabbing the spot by the leg, telling Carnage, I got him, I got him. Carnage then reveals a miraculous grin, revealing a blade, and attempts to stab the spot. However, in the commotion, the spot gets away, and Carnage cuts off Neely's hand. Instead of waiting on Neely, Carnage waits for the next spot to open. He then thrusts his blade into his body, and violently puts the tentacle around his neck. Carnage with a firm grip, then tears the spot apart, declaring that he has finally used all of his spots. Despite Neely's agonizing screams, the spot tells him that he's still alive, and that he still has control over the spotted dimension. But Carnage is unfazed, seizing one of the spots that's already on the ground, telling the spots I'm counting on it. He then goes to check on Neely, who's still complaining over its severed hand. But Carnage assures him that he'll be okay, and to cease his whining. Carnage then picks up Neely, opens up a portal, and leaves. And that is the end. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. And be sure to check out Penny Parker's Canon event. And I will see you guys in the next video.